Ooh, we're at this format today. That means you're going to talk about something you saw. You are correct. I'm getting to that momentarily. So, what was my low, my high, my act of kindness? Well, my low partly is because I forgot to do the outro I said I was going to do, as well as I've been pronouncing Quavo's name wrong this whole time. Sorry. Um, don't worry, I'll try and do it again today. And, um, the former, not the latter. Uh, my high was, I did get to watch Hot Ones yesterday. Um, I actually had to go to bed early and it felt really nice. I really did, I got a little bit of extra sleep, it was great. And my act of kindness was, I, uh, ran an errand for someone. And that was also, also felt really nice. Sorry, but you know, at the weekend today, got Rita's, and awesome. Although I guess another low is that Quavo easily just made the Hall of Shame yesterday after falling to the bomb. Seriously, your cousin Offset was able to do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes I want to get hot ones too, but then I see stuff like that happen, I'm like, maybe I don't know if I should. But, Maybe, maybe someday, but until then, I can just say, happy Friday, everyone. It's Friday, and let's sit in the world I saw yesterday, right? Now, normally, I actually wouldn't be talking about something like this. I'll explain. See, you guys all know, I am a huge Pokemon fan. I really am. I mean, not enough for you to see me, like, collecting all sorts of merchandise, memorabilia, media, all that stuff. But I really do like, I sort of, I do try paying attention to it. And no matter what, man, those creatures are always going to appeal to me. They just will. I don't know why, they just do. I mean, come on, Pokemon essentially Kaiju fights with the citywide property damage. It's awesome. But, with that being said, with a franchise as huge as Pokemon is, you know, there's going to be all sorts of, you know, shorts, you know, mini-series, all that stuff. And yeah, I have seen my fair share of some of them. But, I haven't really seen many which, you know, talk about on camera. And it's different this time because this one just looked like... I should talk about this. So, you know, here we are. I mean, maybe it's going to be a mini-series, maybe it's not, I don't know, but if they do continue with this, I really want to see more. If not, I'm glad, I'm most definitely glad I saw it. Anyway, um, basically, the Pokemon company came out with what are called, you know, Poketunes. They came out with several, neither of which, you know, really appealed to me, but this is their third one, and I saw it, I'm like... Okay, you know what? This looks really good. It's called the uh, Poke Tune You May Know Subomi, which I believe translates to The Journey of Subomi, in which Subomi is the main character of this short, if you will. And it's really short, too. It's only like 13 minutes long. I'll put a link to the description of it. I'll put a link in the description down below if you're interested in watching. It's in Japanese, but, you know, there's um, English subtitles, so... You really shouldn't get lost. Anyway, it actually gave a really fresh take on asking a really important question. Because, sorry, uh, allergies. Because if you ever play Pokemon or even watch the anime or anything like that, you know that when a kid turns 10 years old, they're able to become a Pokemon trainer. Well... This actually sort of gives you a neat perspective on that in the sense that, like, if you're really going to do something like this, you probably need your parents' permission, which, that's how this thing opens up. Basically, it starts off, like, in the morning, this little girl named Subami, main character, like, rushing to get, like, all her chores done, getting the dishes done, like, washing her plates, like, trying to put everything away, and trying to beat her mom to the door, to ask, like, okay, mom, I got all my chores done. Can I go on a Pokemon journey now? You know, I'm 10 years old. All my other friends have already started theirs. Can I go too? And then it cuts back to the kitchen. 
and one of the dishes she was washing fell onto the ground. Which, okay, I'm thinking, okay, in her defense, after she leaves the kitchen, it's fair game. Okay? Like, that ain't on her. But, obviously, you know, you see it and you're like, uh, mom's gonna say no, isn't she? And sure enough, she said no. And basically her mom's reasoning was, you know, you're too caught up in your own head. You know, you're not quite ready enough to take care of yourself in such a mad because I mean, seriously, once you're on a Pokemon journey, like, you're on your own. You don't have your parents, you know, I mean, yeah, you get, like, seriously, the only cool thing about being a Pokemon trainer is that you're exempt from going to school. That's really the only thing. Which actually kind of explains, seriously, if everyone was a Pokemon trainer in real life, the world economy would completely collapse. Anyway, um, with that said, so basically, you know, it cuts back to the kitchen, you're cleaning up the dish with her dad, because her dad was up around, and you're dad, you know, dad, you really could have helped me, yeah, I mean, you were a Pokemon trainer, you were practically a champion, you're all right, and it cuts back to, like, when she, when Sylvie was a little bit younger, and she's watching, like, videos of her dad, with her dad, being a trainer, like, fighting, like, big Pokemon leagues, with a Charizard, which, of course it's gonna be Charizard, Charizard's awesome, everyone knows Charizard's awesome. Seriously, if we're worth the likes of Pikachu, he'd probably be the mascot. I'm telling you, he's the mascot of, Fire, of Pokemon Red and Fire Red, but I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. And then, like, it shows her dad winning one match and then losing to another trainer who they sort of imply that he lost to the champion, I think. I don't know. But anyway, so it cuts to her, like, trying to, you know, because... Obviously, her dad still kept his Charizard because, I mean, you can't, I think, like, once you stop being a Pokemon trainer, I mean, I would think you still get to keep a Pokemon, I think. But anyway, like, she's like, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start my own journey, I don't care what folks say. So, like, she goes to the Pokemon, buys, like, a boatload of potions and Pokeballs, which, okay, that's a smart idea, you know, stock up. Because, I mean, you need Pokeballs to catch Pokemon, obviously, and you need potions to, you know, heal them. Makes sense. And she goes to the woods with, like, a big backpack, and, like, okay, she's a Pikachu, tries to start a Pokeball, doesn't get it. And we just see this montage of her failing up until she has, like, one Pokeball left, which, I'm sorry, I have to, I can't be in the minority for this. If you throw, in real life, if you throw a Pokeball, it's not gonna go anywhere. So why is, like, you throw it away, but you got it forever. That makes no sense at all. But, again, I guess it's using video game logic for this. Or whatever. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway. So, she has, like, one Pokeball left. And she's like, maybe I shouldn't have bought all those potions. You think? Anyway, she sees a male Nidoran. Which, fun fact, Nidoran was actually the first instance of a male and female Pokemon way back in red, blue, and yellow. Yeah. You wouldn't have any sort of gen- You wouldn't have any idea what a gender of a Pokemon was until Generation 2. You know, when Gold, Silver, Crystal came out. So, that's a fun little fact for you. And she sees this Nidoran male in a tree trying to eat some food. And so, okay, I have one Pokemon left, I'm gonna catch it. And then she sees a giant Arbok, you know, the giant snake trying to, you know, attack the Nidoran, and she's like, no, you know, I see this, so she throws the Pokemon at the Arbok, you know, getting rid of the Arbok, getting the Nidoran out of harm's way, which saves the Nidoran or whatever, and, I, actually, I think the Arbok sort of, like, injured the Nidoran a little bit or something, I forget, but what winds up happening is, like, the Arbok obviously isn't captured, you know, it's about to attack Subomi and, you know, the Nidoran, Subomi's like, you're not gonna, like, throw away the Pokemon generation. You shall not pass! Something like that. Anyway, um, then, like, the Arbok about to have the Nidoran comes in, like, uses its horn attack on it, and, you know, then it goes away. And, you know, eventually, you know, this Nidoran and, um, Subami become, like, friends, right? But then the Nidoran's parents arrive, which is the Neo King and Neo Queen. 
All right, if, uh, if it's an interling male, it bottles a needle king. If it's an interling female, it bottles a needle queen. There you go. And obviously they think like, you know, their baby's captured and stuff like that. So they're just going on a rampage. They're causing a ruckus in town. And so eventually, you know, they bring baby Nidoran back to the parents. Everything's all well and good, but wait, the Nidoran wants to be with Subumi. So, yeah, that's how Subumi got her first Pokemon. And so, after seeing everything, the mom and dad are like, okay, we're still a little unsure, but you definitely prove your responsibility out there trying to fix everything. So, we're going to let you go. And then it cuts like the mom and dad talking. And they actually do a little cut towards the end. Like, way back earlier, I mentioned how, like, Sue me and her dad were watching videos of her dad being a trainer and showing the trainer that he lost to. The trainer was Subomi's mom. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's actually a cool little plot twist right there. All right. And then it's, here's, your dad's like, you know, it still broke my heart that I lost to you. But, you know, they wanted to be together, so that, that's really cool, right? And, Basically, neither one of Subomi's parents wound up becoming the champion. And so, they're asking, Do you think maybe Subomi can do this? We'll have to see. Although, I'm actually really kind of glad they actually showed um, how Subomi's father lost. Because apparently, Subomi's father's Charizard lost to um, Subomi's mother's Dragapult. Now... For those of you wondering, a Dragapult is a Pokemon that was introduced, actually just this generation, Generation 8. It's a Ghost Dragon type, pseudo-legendary by the way. Which, yeah, the pseudo-legendaries, go figure. And, like, it shows like the, the Dragapult like still there, because they can turn invisible and stuff, which is awesome. And, like, it shows her like walking off into sunset with a brand new day, with, you know, her and Nidoran. And then it cuts to some time later. Subumi is in the woods battling a Gengar with her now evolved Nidorino. Why is that significant? Because that's literally the opening of red, blue, and yellow. They even do the music. And then it gets to the end of the, the end of the short. I'm like, okay, this is good. This is, this is really good. I liked it. I'm like, I gotta talk about this now, cause I'm like, yep, yeah, it's too good for me to not to talk about it, just for how good it is. Seriously, like, within a day it's been on YouTube, it's got like, within the first like couple hours, it's got like 500,000 views. I was one of them, of course. And, what can I say? It was just really fun to watch. And, I mean, the animation was good. The character designs looked like they were from the original games. With a few alterations here and there, but not bad in any way. Honestly, if you're a Pokemon fan, I highly recommend you check this out. It literally had, like, everything going for it. You know, um... Good animation, good story, good message for kids and adults to follow. You know, kids saying, if you want to take responsibilities, you know, you got to be able to take care of yourself in some capacity. And, you know, parents can get behind that message. So it's really good. Honestly, I think this is like the first sort of original Pokemon series I've seen that I really liked since a few years ago, back when they did Pokemon Journeys and Pokemon Origins. Pokemon Origins was really good. Because basically they like streamlined the story of playing Red, Blue, and Yellow from the perspective of Red, yes, the main trainer in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, the boy that you play as, is Red. I forget who the girl is in Fire Red and Leaf Green, but it's Red and your rival, Gary, is not Gary, it's Blue. Or Green, if you are doing the Japanese, you know, Pokemon Red and Green. So... Yeah, that's, that's one of the main reasons why it's called Red, Blue, Red, Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and Green, because those are the names of the protagonists. You know, that's, that's just how it works. 
And Pokemon Journey is just like sort of tidbits from like games that are like animated that are like really good too. But the you but you made a super me. I definitely really liked it. I highly recommend you check this out if you're a Pokemon fan. You know, it's definitely good message, good animation. You know, it makes you feel young again in some ways. I may actually just watch it again a little later, I don't know. I'll we'll have to see. But yeah, definitely made my, uh, I mean, I didn't even talk about how Totally Not Mark talked about part two of the Chimera Ants arc, which, for all those goals you didn't really like, I'll put a link to that description down below anyway. Anyway, that's about it for now. Like, favorite, share, the subscribe button, follow me on social platform, and subscribe to YouTube. I'm very happy this video for all of you guys watching your today. I'm very hopeful we have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Remember, if you guys want to talk, a channel always going to be here to learn and air. And I'll always have your back. Take care, make good choices, and so don't forget to say it's this time. Be sure to celebrate pride within and around you this month. See ya.